And Moi, he, we had an open pit called the Martha Pit. And it's had a two or three different resource consents and extended. And each time, as you know, under the RMA, you'd all know they have to put a rehabilitation uh, plan in. And it was going to be a lake. So they've been wanting this lake for a number of years because they thought, well, mining's finishing because that consent's finishing in 2008, or the original one was earlier than that, and we'll have a lake. Well, um, what happened is they did some more exploration, they found a further mineral resource, so applied for some further funding. Um, the community were getting a bit upset with that, and now they're doing some underground. And the first application in New Zealand where they're mining gold underground houses. So I can tell you my community got a bit, a bit uh, excited about that, rightly so, you can understand. <coughs> so what happened? We decided to look at the community and work with council and with the mining company about how we actually address those issues and how we might actually move forward. So we set up uh, a representative from council and one from Newmont and went to the community and asked them to vote for some people to represent them in this. And I'm pleased to say I have two here now and I'm going to introduce them. Uh, Anne-Marie um, Anne Spicer is here and Anne-Marie is part of the, the community and is passionate about this subject and has uh, one that's on my, uh, been on my bandwagon for a number of years now, for some time, around this shared royalties. And Bhavish, Bhavish is a local accountant and Bhavish is here and he chairs this community group. So this way he community forum was formed at the announcement when they said we want to apply for this underground mine and I'm going to ask them to spend the next 10-15 minutes or so uh, to give a presentation, give you a local perspective on it and what it might mean. Then we'll break um, uh, for uh, a quick break uh, and then as I say we'll have a couple of other speakers then we'll open it up uh, for a question and answer session. So welcome, Anne-Marie. Thanks for you two also uh, taking the time. Um, hi, so as John has said, I'm Anne-Marie Spicer and this is Bavash Ranchard. We are two of five community representatives on the Waihi Community Forum. Um, we're also business owners in Waihi. As John said, Bavash uh, owns a large accountancy firm and I own a business that does on and off air brand work for companies like TVNZ, ANZ Brand World and also um, Spark. So um, we'd like to thank LGNZ for the opportunity to talk today, um, and particularly John. Um, we're very passionate about the Waihi Community Forum and are always happy to talk about it. And Bavesh is going to be talking a little bit about mining royalties and um, regional development in Waihi. But before he does, I just thought I'd give you a brief background on Waihi, the, uh, the Carenzo Underground Mine, and the Waihi Community Forum. So. As you can see, this is Waihi, very much obviously a mining town. Um, we've got a population of about 4,500 people, and that's a very stable population. It's been 4,500 for a few years, roughly. Um, we are about 90 minutes away from three major cities, Hamilton, Auckland, and, well, Tarong is about 40 minutes away, uh, and two hours away from 70% of the population. Waihi has always been a mining town, apart from a brief gap in the 1950s to 70s. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, can you just click onto the next slide? Oh, sorry. Oh, do I do? Thank you. Oh, that's the bit. Um, we, uh, yeah, are now working with the Carenzo Underground Mine. So uh, plans for this mine were announced in August 2011. And there was a very extensive public consultation period uh, during that time. Uh, we had hearings, a mediation process, and then consent was granted in 2013, in October. Um, this is the Waihi East area here, the residential area. Um, development and exploration drives have already gone in, and production blasting begins in July next year, and that's when we get the really big blasting. This is the first time that Newmont has mined anywhere in the world underneath people's homes. And we're not 100% sure, but we believe this is the only area that will currently be mined underneath residential homes in New Zealand. Um, there are about 500 homes in the east area. Uh, 23 properties already now have uh, either exploration drives or development drives right underneath their houses. And about 46 homes will have uh, 
stopes where the production blasting happens underneath their homes. So uh, obviously the effect of that production blasting will be felt much more widely. Um, the views on Carenzo have been very mixed, as you can imagine. You've got your pro-mining groups, your anti-mining groups, and you've just got every other opinion in between those two areas of thinking. But one thing that did become clear during the public consultation process was that there was a need for better communication from both Newmont and from Council. Um, more transparency was required and uh, more constructive involvement from the community as well. As a result, the Wahi Community Forum was created. Um, there are nine members on the forum, two from Newmont, two from Council and five from the community. And we had a proper election um, paid for by Council um, and over a thousand people voted the four East reps, the community reps in. So there was a lot of community buy-in to this forum at the start. Our purpose is to contribute towards a thriving and sustainable community for residents living in an area affected by mining. And our duties are significant. We include, it includes the um, administration of the $4 million property purchase fund. This is for the purchase of property not positioned over the stopes. That's a separate thing. Um, but we also administer the Streets Ahead scheme, which is um, aimed at improving the area affected by mining. Um, so by doing so, protecting property prices. Um, and we're currently working on a green space in the area. However, that's a voluntary scheme, and um, it's already been halved since uh, consent was granted and runs the risk of being axed should you need to come back for whatever reason. Um, I know this forum today is essentially about mining royalties, but this is also a really good opportunity to talk about this community forum because it's been a real success. And I think it's really easy to forget that um, for your average community person, corporations and council are very scary areas and people are also very suspicious of corporations and council too. Um, community groups, I've found through personal experience, tend to have an agenda. Uh, they're not necessarily pragmatic or balanced in their views. Um, so I can't really stress the importance of having an approachable and constructive group that's really in touch with the community and whose only agenda is to make the best out of the current situation. Um, a group like this bridges the gap between the corporation, the council and the host community. Um, and I recommend any council anywhere in New Zealand who is in a situation like ours to consider a forum like this. Um, we have a website. Uh, we can find us at www.waihecommunityforum.co.nz and uh, we're more than happy to share with you at any time how we operate. Um, right, I'll just hand you over to the to talk about mining royalties. Uh, as was said earlier in the introduction, I'm a local accountant in town, um, part of the Waihe Community Forum now for some time. So mining royalties for us is a huge issue because we worry consist consistently about the future of our town. I've now lived in Waihe all my life, uh, third generation in Waihe, and we want to see a town that will continue on prosperously into the future. And we feel like mining royalties will actually help us get there. So to give you an example, prior to this Carenzo announcement, uh, the mine was scheduled to close, I think it was March 2016 was the latest date. Um, and, it, and it's like having a knife hanging over your head. I mean, for a town that 26% of our GDP is from mining, for that to disappear overnight, is a real problem. Now John's talked about the Gold Discovery Centre that was set up to try and help us along, but again funding became an issue and that got stalled through the, the financial crisis. If we had royalties, some royalties and come back and we're only asking for a share, that would have helped that project along no end. Um, instead we've, we've had to wait quite some time and it's had to be scaled back as well. So it's, it's had a huge effect on our town. I mean, we're talking now with Carenzo about mining under residential homes. So these are not homes that have been purchased by the mine outright. These are ordinary, everyday homes. This is about a mining operation, full-scale mining operation under your house. Um, so, so really, we need to get some sort of benefit back to those people in those homes. Um, and again, we see mining royalties as doing that. But what we really want to create is a, is a town that's that's alive and sustainable beyond just mining. At some point, and it's the same for Taranaki, it's the same for Buller, at some point our resource will come to an end. It may not be economical to mine any longer, and we need to plan for that now. Um, 
and royalties will help us do that. I mean, one of the things we're doing at the moment, which is a voluntary scheme that Newmont provide, is called Streets Ahead. So annually we're funded by Newmont to put projects into the community. Uh, we've already done home improvement schemes. Uh, we're now doing a, a green space open, open park for people. Now those are things that couldn't have been done without that funding from Newmont. But as, as Anne-Marie said, it's a voluntary scheme and it's already been cut once. Um, so, you know, if we had royalty money and that was more consistent, it would make it much easier for us to plan into the future. The other thing is, is we want to see more regional development. Obviously, if we can create some jobs now that will supplement and hopefully take over from that void once mining leaves, that will create um, a long-term future for the town beyond just mining. Uh, another, another problem with mining, the way it works is we have short term. So Carenza now is funded for three years, I think, it's a three year project. So if you're, investment, if you're investing in the town and other sort of infrastructure and other um, projects, you're looking at only a three year horizon. So as it stands, after three years the mine will close, we will lose 400 jobs, we'll lose 26% of our GDP. Now people who are investing in buildings and roads and and services aren't going to do that for a three year period. But if we had mining royalties, we could help do that again. Um, and it's all about, for us, it's all about building that long term, the long term future of the town. Um, the other thing is with royalties, if some of those royalties were re returned back to the region, I think it would be easier. You'd probably have more support from the community. At the moment, the, the benefits of that mining are quite limited to certain sectors of the community. Whereas if they saw something coming back, um, I think we would do a lot better. Might be a lot easier for Newmont as well. Um, I mean, another good example, now there was, a, there was a time in New Zealand's history when royalties did go back to the region, and Otago is probably a really, really good example of that. So during the gold rush there, uh, a portion of the royalties were returned to Otago. That money was directly used in building things like Otago University which became New Zealand's first university, which is still now providing uh, sustainability for the region. So that is a direct result of what you can see when mining royalties go back to the region. Um, and, and that's the sort of thing we want to aim for. Um, one of the projects we're currently involved in, we're trying to set up a group to bring other manufacturing jobs and, and businesses out of the main cities, so out of the likes of Auckland, um, to try and exploit some of the other strategic advantages that Wahi has you know, in terms of affordable housing, access to the port, all of those sort of things. But with funding from royalty, we can make some of those projects work um, and, and bring, bring some sustainability and, and a future for Wai beyond just mining. Because it, inevitably, at some point, the mining will run out. Um, our group, being a community group, is great. I mean, the way the forum is structured, we have, as Amory has said, five community reps two council reps and two Newmont reps. So it really is a partnership between all three groups. Um, and we thank Newmont for doing that. We um, understand they're not obliged to commit to that process and it's completely voluntary on their part. But uh, we all, all three parties really need to work together because we don't want the legacy of Wahi just to be a hole in the ground. We want mining legacy to actually be something that was great for the community uh, for time to come. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Amory. Thanks, uh, Bavish. Uh, we'll get you back here later uh, for a question and answer. I just want to, <coughs> as, just as we go to break, um, just want to address the issue that has been brought to me and said, but look, whatever you do, at the end of the day, when mining finishes, they'll just leave and they'll go and they'll just follow somewhere else. You know, from my experience, that is not what actually happens. That is not generally the case. When someone's been living in a community, working in that community for 25 years and becomes part of that community, they actually do want to stay. I mean, look at Twizel. <laughs> People are still there. Um, and why? Sometimes I'd ask, but I don't want to hear from Twizel, is it? <laughs> um, but if I'd go back to why he again, as an example, I don't know if you realise, but the pie factory where they used to make televisions and that were all made in why he. I can tell you today, there are still people today that are still working in my he very successfully. For instance, Heller, Heller Lights. Would you know that Heller Lights are made throughout the world are made in Waihe? So every truck that's on the road with a Heller light comes out of, the component actually comes out of Waihe. And he was an ex-pie person that didn't want to leave. 
and there's another electronic company. So what I'm really saying is people actually get part of the community and really do want to stay there. And I think we know that on the West Coast, uh, Tony, you know, and, and other parts of the country. So the attraction of the city's not <coughs> all together for, sorry, people in the city here, uh, not everyone, and being an ex-Aucklander, uh, you know, I can tell you, uh, born and bred Aucklander, uh, much as I like to go there, um, it's not a place I'd, uh, I'd want to stay there. But I shouldn't say that because my young family's there. Moving on. Uh, but, but, you know, I think there's a preference. Don't be illusioned. I think people do want to stay where they, where they actually spend some time. And, and uh, We'll break for uh, 10, 15 minutes. Please uh, have a cup of tea, cup of coffee, uh, before we have the next two speakers. Cheers.